Okay, so in this screencast, I'm going to be showing you how to view and interact with ASHA journal articles on your iPad. So the first app that's going to come into play here is the Safari app. So I'm going to open up Safari. And you can just go to any of the journal pages, um, as I did here, or you can go to uh, journals.asha.org. Uh, and use this page the same way I showed in my previous entry about accessing journals online. So you can use the keyword search or the advanced search. And here I'm going to look up an author who I know has articles. And once I find my results, I'll simply open them the same way that I did on um, in my other blog entry there by clicking PDF. And this time I'm going to say open. Okay, and that allowed me to go right through because I was already signed in. So if you're not signed in, you'll have to sign in. So you're going to be able then to read PDFs right in your Safari browser if you like. So you can click and drag through if you want to look at something a little bit more closely. You can pinch and unpinch using the multi-touch gestures that um, work on iPad. So that's how you can view it in Safari. However, you might be interested in, first of all, saving this article to read later or uh, looking at it in a little bit of a different way. When you tap on the screen, you're going to get the option to open in iBooks. And this little icon over here, open in, allows you to open in some other things too. So notice it has I annotate PDF, which I'm going to be talking about in a minute. But for now, I'm just going to open this one in iBooks, which is a free app. So that opened that in iBooks, and I can read this much the same way I did in Safari um, by clicking, to, uh, clicking and dragging or tapping and dragging to move to different pages and zooming. Uh, the good thing about iBooks is now when I go back to library, this... Um, article is always going to be here in my library until I delete it. So it's a place for you to save and you can even make collections um, of articles if you'd like. So the other um, piece I'm going to show you is how to use I annotate PDF. I annotate PDF is a really powerful um, app that allows you to make all sorts of annotations on a PDF, such as a journal article you downloaded uh, from ASHA. It is a $10 app, but I do believe that it's well worth it given what it can do. When you open, uh, when you first get I Annotate PDF, I do recommend reading the user guide that comes with it that will open up automatically when you get the app. It really gives you a good overview. I'm not going to say too much about I annotate except um, for some of the annotations that you can do and there's a lot more you can do with it. So one of the things that's great about it is you can use I annotate PDF just to download um, documents that you'd like to read and take notes on. So I selected web download and this actually brings me into a browser. So I could go to the same web page that we've gone to before, but I'm just accessing it through iAnnotate PDF. So if I wanted to download a particular article, let's take something from the latest version. I'm going to browse issues and From January 2010. Let's say I wanted to take this article. And you can see down here in the corner, let me adjust slightly here, that it tells me that the PDF has been downloaded. So I'm going to click on that.
okay, and this looks much the same as it did in Safari or iBooks, except now we can do something we, could, we can't do in iBooks. You can take all sorts of notes and save your notes with the journal article. There are different ways you can do that. If you see the left um, toolbar, sorry, the toolbar on the right, um, you can use a highlighter, and anything you highlight will stay with it. It's got these little handlebars, so if you want to click and drag uh, the handlebars to expand what you've highlighted, you can do that. Then you just simply dismiss the highlighter. The highlight will stay. If you're more of an underline person, you can use the underline tool. And do some underlining. And this is all, um, you can customize colors if you have preferred colors you like to work with. All that's available here. Um, if you want to write a note, you can just tap where you want the note to live. And that note will stay there. Notice it creates kind of like a hidden note. So I know I made a note there because there's a little word balloon. Is you can actually put a note that will appear right over the text if you'd like. That's with the typewriter. And that stays with the text instead of being um, hidden. Okay, and you can change the size of that if you'd like. Um, they even have little stamps that you can use. If you wanted to circle something, you can make it a circle there from the circle stamp. You can also use circling annotations. Okay, so this is um, a pretty big mess of annotations. Surely you'd be doing it more thoughtfully. And the last thing I'm going to show is what you can do with this. You, once this is here, it's basically going to save in my library. So I'm going to go back up to my library. And this is my document manager, really. Okay, so these annotations are always going to stick with this in the library as I... Um, as I created them. But if you're working with someone uh, and this journal article is important, maybe it's a journal club or uh, you're doing research and you want to share your ideas about a journal article, you can uh, mail the document and mail it in an annotated version. So if you select PDF annotated, what it's doing is this file that it has here it's an annotated version of that PDF, and you could just send it on to who you choose to send it on to. This also gives you the option to mail a, like a summary, um, so it shows uh, everything that you highlighted. Um, it gives more of a summary of your annotations. So that's it. You can use iAnnotate PDF to make notes on ASHA journals, share them with others and collaborate. Um, or you can simply view ASHA journals through Safari or put them in your iBooks library. That's it for today. Thank you.